Why are you silent on not endorsing one political party over another? <laughs> oh, that lands on you. <laughs> Followers of Christ either avoid politics or we're going to get involved. I think that there are a lot of Christians who lived in the early 19th century who made a big mistake. They said, we don't want to be political, so we're not going to address the slavery issue in the United States. Big mistake. Jesus taught in the parable of the Good Samaritan that when we see people who are hurting, when we see people who are hungry, when we see people who are being beaten up, we are to intervene and seek to love them and embrace them. I'm convinced that there are a lot of Christians who lived in the early 20th century, who lived in Germany, and who said, well, I don't want to get involved in politics, so I'm not going to address the issue of Nazism and Adolf Hitler. Tragic mistake on their part. To not be political is to be political. What does that mean, Cliff? It means you're embracing the status quo. If you don't vote in the United States, you are voting to embrace the status quo. And that is why we as followers of Christ seek to be involved in the political process. But here's the big problem. The big problem is when I become convinced the Republican Party is God's party. No, the Democratic Party is God's party. No, the Independent Party is God's party. That is a big mistake. Why? Because when I say that a particular party, whatever that party is, is God's party, what I'm saying is that the Church of Jesus Christ is a voting power block. And skeptics understandably have a very hard time with that. No, the Church of Jesus Christ worships Jesus Christ, not a political party. Not only that, the majority of political decisions do not involve God's commands. Rather, the majority of political decisions that are made involve practical wisdom. And therefore, for me to try and maintain that one particular party always adopts God's positions is dangerous. That is why I have so much respect for President Abraham Lincoln. During the Civil War, a minister said to Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln, let's pray that God is on our side in this horrible conflict. And President Abraham Lincoln responded, no, let's not pray that God is on our side. Let's pray that we are on God's side, for God's side is always correct. That is an appropriate humility when it comes to dealing in the political realm that is crucial. And also in politics today, there is something that is called the package deal ethics, talked about by a tremendous ethicist from England. And the thinking is this. If you and I agree on an ethical persuasion in a political party's platform, it means we have to agree with everything. It's a package deal. So if you're part of a political party, you've got to vote consistently with that party. I disagree. I am convinced that we as followers of Christ are to read the Bible, God's Word. We are to have a biblical worldview. We are to work through different issues and address them from a Christ-honoring, Bible-based perspective. That is crucial. In Mark, Mark chapter 12, Jesus was asked a question. The Herodians and the Pharisees came up to Jesus and they said, Hey, Jesus, should we pay taxes? They were trying to corner him and force him to make a mistake. And Jesus said, Show me one of your coins. They handed him a coin and he said, Whose head is that on this coin? And they said, Caesar's. And Jesus said, Render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. In other words, God has appointed governments to rule, to promote justice. Are there bad governments? Yes, there are. Are there some governments that promote injustice? Yes, they are, just like people. Governments are no different from people because, gosh, they're made up of people. By golly, what a surprise. So, Jesus says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Respect the government. But render to God what is God's because ultimately, all authority comes from God. Now, over the past 50 years of my life, I've been pretty tightly wedded to some political positions. But the more I think about it, the more I realize that the bottom line is Jesus is King. Jesus Christ is Lord of the universe. 
and it is my responsibility to serve him as I am involved in the political process. It is my responsibility to live for him and to honor him. Did Jesus save us with a sword? No. Jesus Christ saved us with nails in his hands. And before I get so committed to a political position, I have to be very humble and question, all right, Lord, how am I to express this? How am I to express that my ultimate citizenship is in heaven? And yes, I want to honor this country. And yes, I am grateful that I am an American. But I've got to be very careful that I do not whack people over the head with a political position and then say, that's God's position. For that is to go down a very dangerous path.